Hello and welcome to Baiju's exam prep IAS. Welcome to the big news of the day. The topic for today's big news is Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. Today is his birthday. In this short and crisp analysis, we will understand his life and his contributions to Indian society as well as to Indian constitution. Before we do that, I have some announcements. Baiju's exam prep IAS is conducting a national scholarship test on 17th April. Register for this test and win the attractive scholarships. Another announcement is the episode 3 of Mnemonics and Mind Maps will be available. In this you will learn the tricks that you can use to remember. The last announcement is the weekly current affairs explained analysis will be available this week and the topic is Sri Lanka's economic crisis. In this video a detailed explanation of this crisis will be given. So let's go back to our topic. Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar. His birth anniversary is celebrated every year on 14th April. It's also known as Ambedkar Jayanti or Bhim Jayanti. Dr. Ambedkar is also lovingly and popularly known as Baba Sahab Ambedkar. Baba Sahab Ambedkar was the leader of the oppressed castes. He was a social reformer. He was a social reformer and architect of Indian constitution and India's first law and justice minister. Let's understand his life and his contributions to the Indian society. See, Ambedkar was born in 1891 in Mao in the central provinces, which is today's Madhya Pradesh. He was born to a Marathi family. His father, Ramji Maloji Sakpal, was an army officer. In fact, he was a sobedar in the British Army. Baba Sahab passed his matriculation in 1907 and 1908 from Elphinstone high school. He also obtained his graduate degree in economics and political science from Bombay University. In 1912, Baba Sahab faced caste discrimination as a student. He was segregated from other upper caste students in his school days. But this did not prevent Baba Sahab from attaining education. In fact, after passing his graduate degree, he went to Columbia University to do his post graduation in economics but this he could do only after financial assistance from the ruler of Baroda Sayaji Rao III. At Columbia University Baba Sahab wrote a thesis titled as Ancient Indian Commerce. He later obtained two PhDs from Columbia University and London School of Economics. He becomes the first Indian to obtain a PhD in economics. So you see, that's why he's called Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. During 1920s, Baba Sahab fought for the rights of the depressed classes or Dalits. He became the leader of the oppressed castes. To uplift the oppressed castes, he wrote about their condition. He also established many organizations and demanded rights for these oppressed castes called untouchables. So he launched a newspaper called Mook Nayak or Leader of the Silent. He also established periodicals like Bahishkrit Bharat, Ostracized India, Samatha, Equality, Janata, The People. All these newspapers and periodicals gave voice to the oppressed. He wrote about the social and economic condition of these oppressed castes. He also established welfare associations like Outcast Welfare Association, Bahishkrit Hitkarni Sabha, to demand rights for the oppressed. For example, he demanded that public drinking water sources such as wells should be open to all castes. Untouchables or lower castes were denied access to public sources of drinking water. Likewise, they were denied entry to temples. So Baba Sahib demanded that these rights shall be given to, to the oppressed caste. Also during 1920s, Baba Sahib Ambedkar also demanded separate electorates for depressed castes. Here you have to understand that colonial government, that's the British government, gave separate electorates to Muslims under 1909 Morley Minto reforms. 
also other communities like Sikhs were given separate electorates these electorates mean that only Muslim candidate can be chosen and by Muslim electorates but this demand was opposed by Gandhi he kept a fast to pressurize Ambedkar so that he gives up this demand for separate electorates the fast pressurized Ambedkar and he gave up the demand and it led to a Pune pact so under this pact so under this pact Dalits got reservation in legislatures so the difference between reservation and separate electorates is that there will be joint electorate that, that all the communities will vote but but only a Dalit candidate will contest the election Dr. B. R. Ambedkar was also interested in politics. He established an independent Labour Party, which later was transformed into Scheduled Castes Federation in 1936. Baba Sa was not only a leader of the oppressed castes. He was much more than that. He was a scholar and architect of the Indian Constitution. He was the chairman of the drafting committee and helped shape the Indian constitution as we know it today. If you have to understand Baba Sahib's contribution to India, you have to understand that the principles which govern Indian constitution, Baba Sahib has immensely shaped them. For example, the liberal democratic constitution that India gave to itself after independence was Baba Sahib's vision. He believed in parliamentary form of democracy with rights for minorities and civil liberties enshrined in the constitution. If you look at the chapter of fundamental rights where right to equality, right to religion, right to life and other rights are enshrined, Baba Sahib made an immense contribution. In fact, he called Article 32 of the Indian constitution as the soul of Indian constitution as all fundamental rights under article 32 become justiciable that's why this article is very important and Baba Sahib recognized that importance Baba Sahib was also asked why there is a detailed constitution Indian constitution is one of the lengthiest constitutions in the world Baba Sahib said it's important to put into law everything so that the future leaders do not misuse these laws. But Baba Sahib's mission was larger. He saw constitution as not only bringing political democracy in India, rather he was a strong votary of social and economic democracy. Baba Sahib said that we have established political equality, but it will be useless if we do not establish social and economic equality in the society. He knew that India has social divisions like caste discrimination, gender discrimination. He also knew that India is a deeply unequal society when it comes to wealth. Some own more wealth, some have less. Now, Baba Sahib knew that if we do not do social and economic reform, this political democracy will not succeed. You see, Baba Sahib is not only a leader who's thinking about the untouchables or the oppressed castes. He had much broader missions to create an equal society. In that sense, he's an equalizer. This can be also seen when he became the law and justice minister of the independent India. He was the first law minister of the independent India, but he resigned from the cabinet of Prime Minister Nehru on differences over Hindu code bill. Baba Sahib wanted to pass a Hindu code bill that will give equal rights to Hindu women in marriage, inheritance and divorce. But there were opposition to this bill. Some argued that it will destroy Hindu culture and they wanted to pass a diluted version of this bill. But Baba Sahib, as you know, was an equalizer. He wanted equality for all. So he resigned. Apart from being an equalizer, Baba Sahib was also a prolific scholar. He wrote many books. For example, the annihilation of caste in 1936, Pakistan or partition of India, the Buddha and his Dhamma. He also wrote books on financial matters. In fact, this is the less known fact about Baba Sahib Ambedkar. For example, he wrote the evolution of provincial finance in British India, the administration and finance of the East India Company. So you see, as a writer, as a scholar, as a leader, as a minister, as an equalizer, Baba Sahib has made all-round contributions. After his resignation from the cabinet, Baba Sahib turned to inquire into religions. And he studied all the religions and finally converted to Buddhism. He renounced Hinduism because he said it's loaded with caste system. 
and caste system denies equality of human beings. Therefore, Baba Sahib said Dalits or depressed caste need an alternative religion and he chose Buddhism. Why did he choose Buddhism? Because he said it's based on humanism. It believes in equality of all human beings, promotes liberty of individuals and most importantly, it promotes fraternity between people. This great man, after his conversion to Buddhism, died on 6 December 1956 at his home in Delhi. He was cremated according to Buddhist rites in Dadar and his memorial place is called Chetya Bhumi. 6 December, the day of Baba Sahib's death, is celebrated as Mahapari Nirvan Din. With this, I would like to end this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.